Hey, what's up? Dave here. And in this quick video, I want to share how I feel about Jupyter Notebooks and why I personally almost never use them anymore. And then, of course, explain what I do right now and how it has improved my workflow to hopefully help you out as well, potentially, if you're not aware of this. So when I started out on my data science journey, the first thing that I would do whenever there was a new project, I would come into my project folder open up a terminal and then start a Jupyter Notebook. So I would come in here in the browser and then start to work on my projects. And now the first thing that I wanna share with you in this video is if you're still using this method of using Jupyter Notebooks within the browser, please don't do that anymore. There's a much better way to do that, which is not the main point of this video, but this is already a tip because you can also use Jupyter Notebooks inside IDEs like VS Code. The experience is almost completely the same, like all your shortcuts, like A to add a cell above, D to delete, everything that you are used to also works within this IDE, but it just overall improves your workflow already a, a lot by having a dedicated IDE that can help you with auto completions. For example, you can use GitHub Copilot, you have your folder structure over here, you can just save this as a project on your laptop or computer without having to open up the terminal and run the uh, Jupyter server every time. So this is something you do not want to do. But now let's get into what really, if you want to use Jupyter Notebooks, when and why you should use them, and then also why you might not want to use Jupyter Notebooks. The thing about Jupyter Notebooks here is, is that, that sharing documentation storytelling is, is great for putting it out in the world, for tutorials, etc. But when you look internally, inside of a company, for example, of your, or your own projects that you're working on, there are a lot of downsides to using these Jupyter Notebooks. And the interactive exploration is great. And in a bit, I'm going to show you a better way to still do that while writing pure Python code in Python files. And this has completely changed my workflow in terms of speed, productivity, and overall, like how much fun coding really is for me. If we then get into the problems really with Jupyter Notebooks, first of all, to me, it's like coding efficiency is not optimal. There's a much better way to do this. What I find annoying about Jupyter Notebooks is that you, con you are constantly managing these cells. So right now, for example, if I have these Y train, Y test, I, I should then come in here and then, oh, I wanna have a look at that. But now I also wanna see actually what Y test is. And you are constantly managing these cells and figuring out what's the best way to, to go about this. And that overall just drastically reduces the, your efficiency when you're working on this. So now let's show you a better way. And I have, an, I have the same example code over here, but then refactored into some functions and I have it here inside a Python file. So before we were just working in a IPy notebook and this is just a plain Python file, as you can see. The cool thing within VS Code is that you can run Python interactive windows. And that is what you're seeing over here. If you don't know how to do that, you can come into the settings and you can search for Jupyter Interactive and then make sure to check mark this. Because then whenever you have a certain piece of code selected, you can press shift enter and it will push it to the interactive window over here. And that interactive window is essentially in the background, the same as running a Jupyter notebook which means it will store all of your data in memory and you can then jump back and forth in your code file to access all of that and to make changes. But now where this completely changes the game is, let me start this up, is that you can come in these line by line and run them individually without having to create a new cell as you would in the Jupyter Notebook. Let's see what it looks like over here. I can come in here and run this, and then I can come in here line by line. Now, when I'm on this line, line 19, and I can do everything with the arrows. I can hit shift enter. Now it loads the Y. I jump to the front of the line, select just the Y variable, and I can print it over here. Now I can come to the next line, run this, look at Y train, look at Y test, and see maybe, oh, actually, I wanna do something over here. I'm not sure what Copilot is suggesting here, but let's see. I want to have another. I want to have another split of the data. Does it work? Oh, actually, you know what? I want another year. 
I can even come in between, select parts of this line and look at this. Okay, this looks better. Now let's run the whole line, store it in Y train. Is it correct? Yes, it's correct. Now let's take all of this, run it line by line, and then look at the forecast. This is amazing, right? This is so much more efficient than constantly coming in here and having to wiggle around with these cells and managing all of that. It quickly becomes a mess. So this workflow, literally this one setting, where was it? The interactive window that I just showed has really completely changed how I, pro how I, how I approach my projects. And the interesting thing is, this is just the start, because hopefully by now I've already convinced you to at least explore this, if you haven't used this already, but now we can leverage so much more functionality of working with Python files and using a dedicated IDE, so all of a sudden also version control becomes much easier because you can do version control on Jupyter Notebooks, but it, it's a little more messy, so version control becomes better. Another major reason, in my opinion, to use Python files is that your code also becomes production ready, meaning that whenever you work on something, for example, this it's a very simple machine learning example over here, but whenever you come in here and you would have to put this into production, for example, everything is already Python code and is a function where we can store all of this. And now, for example, I can just run this function airline predictions, and then that would be the uh, final result or the output that I can then write to, uh, to a report. I see that there's a misspelling here in predictions, but anyway, it works. <laughs> you get the idea. That is also a big benefit. Your code by default becomes much more production ready. It's also much easier to manage larger code bases because if you have a bunch of notebooks, it can be tricky to see what's where. Um, they can typically typically get long. And when you work with Python files, you can, for example, follow the cookie cutter data science template approach, which is what I'm using here. If you're not aware of that, you can look that up. But you can really split all of your files into, for example, first creating a data set, then building the features, then doing uh, the modeling and the training, etc. And you can really split split all of that up to refactor your code in that way and make it more dynamic. This also allows you to, for example, when we now come into this other file, import example, come in here, I can import that same load and pre-process airline data that we defined over here. I can import that and I can now load that. And now within another file, I have that same functionality and that same data without having to manually do this again, where in Jupyter Notebooks, it's not as like straightforward. You can, all, you can also do these imports, but the thing is because you're used to working in Notebooks, you typically just copy paste the functions or the classes or whatever you're using back into that same Notebook because you wanna have that overview of everything in, in, in one place. That's another major improvement over the Notebook workflow, managing larger code bases. It's also a much more consistent workflow because like I've said, there, there's definitely still a place for notebooks, but there are also really a lot of projects, especially if you shift more towards, the, uh, towards software engineering where it doesn't make sense to use a Jupyter notebook and you should just use plain Python. And if you get acquainted with using or working with Python files in general, compared to notebooks, then every project you can use the same workflow. You can use, you can get used to working with uh, functions and classes and it overall streamlines the process where if you have to jump back and forth, oh, now we're working the Python file. Oh, now I have to get used to the working with A and D and B and all these shortcuts again. It's everything like with muscle memory, it, it gets more complex. All right, so that's number five. And number six, I also think a big one, that is learning proper coding practices. And it, it come, I think it, it ties into most of the things that we've already discussed, but in a Python file, it's much more, it's a much more natural way of writing these, these functions and classes and splitting them up and, and refactoring them. And in a Jupyter notebook, you typically don't do this is because you just have one, like I said, one notebook file and you piece everything below each other. And for me, at least, when I switched to this workflow, I think right now it's two or three, year, three years ago probably that I completely switched to this workflow. My, like, my, coding, my coding skills have really improved. It has really like 10x, I think, compared to where I was. So that's 
really what I wanted to share with you in this video and hopefully explain you a little bit more about my rationale behind this. Now, if you want to learn more about this and how I uh, really set up my VS Code workflow and also, for example, the folder templates that I use, I will link you to this video. So this is my entire development workflow for data and AI projects. So you can see in here, uh, we have folder templates, VS Code workflow, uh, project management tool, documentation, Everything is in there. It's The video is an hour long. It's actually from my program, Data Freelancer, where I help data professionals to get started with freelancing. Uh, this is one of the modules from week six. I've made it available for free. It's an hour long. I believe it's it's packed with value. It's, it's how we manage to run multiple projects with all of our clients together right now. So if you want to learn more about that, then I would highly recommend checking out this video. And then, yeah, that's it. I hope you learned something about this. If you were not aware about using the interactive window, make sure to explore it because it will literally change your workflow forever. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Consider subscribing and then go check out this video next where I share the development workflow.